Hello, hello, hello. Before this episode started, I just wanted to say a few quick words. I just wanted to say a few quick words. First of all, I wanted to say thank you, genuinely and honestly, from the bottom of my heart, for clicking on and for choosing to watch the bench. Really, really appreciate it. Um, I started the bench about a year ago with a friend of mine, Mandy, and we've been going strong since. And the bench has hit quite a few. <laughs> It's hit quite a few bumps, hit quite a few bumps, but we're still going, we're still going strong. And this is our 30th episode. So we've put out about an episode for every day of the month, which is pretty cool. And yeah, we hope to keep going. So again, thank you for everyone who's ever liked, who's ever shared, who's ever commented, who's ever subscribed. We really, really do appreciate you. Second thing I wanted to say was on this episode... I was messing around with the camera settings a little bit and I think I just messed them up completely. So the camera quality for this doesn't look great at all. It's actually been annoying me so much. I was even considering not putting out the video, but the video is going up anyways. The video is going to go up anyways. So I'm putting it out, but just a disclaimer, the camera quality on this one isn't the best. So this might just be an audio podcast for you. (laughs) But that's cool. Again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you much, so much for liking, for sharing, for subscribing. Really, really do appreciate it. Shout out to you. Big up to you. But yeah, thank you. Goodbye. Bye. But how do you... Honestly, I'm so terrible at signing things off. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hello, you hello. Intro, do you want me to do it? You can't do it. You can't do it. Because you, you didn't rate my one. It's okay. Okay, okay. Let me get in the zone. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> 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 I'm just laughing at the start of every episode for no reason. But yeah, welcome back to the bench. 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 With your boy, Franklin. And with your girl. Andy G. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's crazy. Amen. Hallelujah. But why can't you throw gun signs? I think it's actually quite natural to me. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I accidentally didn't work one time. Ooh. Yeah, my <laughs> coworker. Be it. No, no, I shouldn't be. <laughs> my coworker was across the thing and I was like, yo. Yo. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do that. No. This is a corporate establishment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nah. I was gonna speak in like, like I don't know, in road words today. I said, "Ooh, really?" Sometimes Ooh. it slips out. I said, "Ooh, me. yeah." Like, Check your environment, baby. <laughs> don't do that. Because when I'm in work, I speak proper. Like Bro. I speak proper, anyways, right? But like when I'm in work, I speak like proper, proper. So sometimes I might give up the impression that I'm posh, and then sometimes the madman just it just slips out. Slips out. Yeah, like, crazy. One time I was talking to one of my. One of my um, like seniors, mm. and someone of anno- had annoyed me, right? And I was talking about the guy. And I was like, "Is he mad?" <laughs> I was like, "Is he mad?" If I catch him, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna, ooh, wait. bro. I was like, "I'm gonna, mm, I'm going to pray mm, for him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to intercede on his behalf." No, no, no. I was, I was actually, actually, I'll tell the story. Like, I was pissed off, bro. I think I told you, like, I was trying to start that thing in work, Mm -hmm. and then somebody else came on board. Oh, yeah, yeah, And then he discredited my work. Mm -hmm. He tried to take my position. Mm. He tried to be sneaky about it. And then at some point, he essentially just said, I don't think you're good enough to do this. Let me take it over. Crazy. Bro. Crazy. I was like, is he mad? Crazy. If I catch him, I'm gonna... It's on sight. I'm gonna... (laughs) Bro, I'm going to... Ah... If I just, if I display now, yeah. if I, ah, nah, nah, I was pissed off. Eesh. So sometimes like that, like, things, I'm not even rude, guy. I live in Kari too. There's no road here. <laughs> but like, no, there is no road here. No, I don't think, there's 5,000 people in Kari too, bro. Which, even, which road? I think, I think a thousand of those are just animals. <laughs> <laughs> that's the population, dude. bro. This so is like be lying to this us. is like Noah's Ark. Two people and how many thousand? Yeah, animals? Man. no cap, no like, cap. Nah. So yeah, man. Sometimes the road might just if it jumps out. I'm sorry. Mm. I'm sorry. This is sanctified road. Yeah. Is the road to heaven? Mm-hmm. Um, the narrow. 
the narrow yeah. road, the narrow way, the narrow path. <laughs> I like it. Why are you feeling, man? What's up? I'm good. I'm mm-hmm. good. I'm good. I'm good. It's good to live in an answered prayer. Amen. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. I didn't even say anything wild. Wow. I'm actually overdoing it now. This is why. This is how I know I'm with the real one. But sorry, continue. Yeah. It's good to live in an answered prayer. Yeah, man. It's good to live in an answered prayer. We're finally starting work. Mm-hmm. Like, I was so nervous on my first day, actually. I don't really? know why. Child, please. Anyway. I was just nervous. I was like, ah, I don't know. But mm. it's cool. It's cool. Mm. Like, I know the team. The team know me. Like, yeah. I literally, like, opened my laptop and I was getting welcome back messages. I said, oh, oh we really love it. Cute, we love the love. That's so cute, man. We love the love. And, like, the heck? my old manager was literally like, I'm so glad you're here. Mm. And I absolutely love him, by the way, because he's one of the people, like, I remember... We were working on the project, and he looked at me. He goes, "I wouldn't be surprised if you were my boss one day." Raw. This you're is that good, bro. He's an assistant director now. You're that good. I was like, "What did I do?" You're that good. I don't know what I did. Hey, my dear, I said, like, "Do you know about the epakola mi ankola?" Yes, wait, wait. I have to explain what that is. <laughs> epakola mi ankola. <laughs> what does that mean? Epakola mi ankola. Epako yami onkolo. Mm-mm. Epakola. Mm-hmm. Mi. Mm-hmm. Ya. Mm-hmm. Kolo. Epako yami. Epakola mi. Epakola mi. Mm-hmm. Ya. Ya. Onkolo. Onkolo. Uh-huh. What does that mean? Anointing. Hey! <laughs> what, what? It's just one word. Why does it sound so long in Lingala? What the hell? No, it's like, it's like God's anointing. Oh, okay. And he was like, you don't know about you it. You don't know about the pepacula. See, when you say anointing, it's just... Hmm. Mm. But when you say pepacula, me and colo. Nah, that's how it's changed. Bro, Ooh. on this channel, we are no longer saying anointing. Nah, 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 nah. Just pepacula, me and colo. Ancolo. The Ngala is actually such a fun language, man. The language sounds like it's dancing. But yeah. Bro, pepacula, me and colo. <laughs> Bro, what? <laughs> nah, that's so cool. That's yeah. so, so, so cool. So, we thank mm. God, bro. We thank God. We thank God. Nah, I'm happy to hear that, man. I'm actually happy to hear that. How's life, though? How's life for me? Mm-hmm. Bro, genuinely, life has actually been a blur. Like, we did our episode two weeks ago, and I was mm. like, yeah. I don't even know if I said that, but I was stressed. But I was proper stressed that time. Mm. And, like, the stress just continued. Like, I'm genuinely, August was one of the most stressful months of my entire life so far. Fair. Like, one of the most stressful months of my entire life. It was just situation after situation, circumstance after circumstance. And I'm going through a massive transition all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Transitioning out of one place, going into another place. And Mm -hmm. it's like, okay, the transition is disorienting enough. Like, it's one thing to be making a huge step. Mm. It's another thing to have to be dealing with issues the entire way. Bro, as in like, one person will call me, Frank, it's going on, can you sort this out? One person will call me, Frank, it's going on, you sort this out. I have to go and have a difficult conversation with one person. I'm building something that I don't even know what the final product is going to look like. I'm pulling together a team. I'm like, oh, bro, it's been stressful. And I think one of the biggest stressors was trying to hold everything up so it's like you have all these pieces and Mm. i'm just trying to keep everything afloat but there's so many different pieces and at some point holding everything up was like hurting me so much i just had to start letting stuff fall no cap i had like i was like it's either i be incompetent or i just break into Mm -hmm. like it's either i be incompetent or i suffer i just I just collapse. Yeah. So I was like, I have to, to some extent, be willing to stomach this appearance of incompetence, mm-hmm. this appearance of I don't know what I'm doing. And as a, hmm. bro. And as a black man, bro, that's like, a lot. Ah. Oh, so, cause I, I can understand. Like yeah, to that point, it might be a very difficult thing to do. From a work perspective, it's like I always want to give my best. But genuinely, my best right now does not exist. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm barely, I'm barely surviving just on a day-to-day thing. Like, I'm barely managing. 
And then with everybody else, like, I don't want to disappoint anyone. Mm. And then I just had to accept, A, somebody's going to be disappointed in me. This I'm going to let someone down this month. Somebody going to be hurt. And I think it showed me that I'm actually, I'm not a perfectionist, but I love doing things right, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I love showing up. I love looking the part. I'm not going to lie. I love looking the part. I'll be with you on that one. I won't lie. <laughs> Bro. I can't even give you encouragement. <laughs> I'm right there next to you. I love, I love looking the part. Yeah. I love looking capable. I love looking like I know what I'm doing. Like, I love showing up and people are like, that's this the guy is the we guy. want. This, this is the is guy the we guy. want on the job. In you we trust. In you we trust. In you we trust. Bro, yeah. I want to be the person that walks in the room and people are like, I could trust him. Mm. I can give him this to manage. Yeah, sure. I like being in a position where I couldn't be that person. And if you need something done right now, the last person you want to talk to is me. That was ugh, that actually shook me, man. It shook me because it was like, when I'm not capable, who am I? <laughs> Are you putting your identity in that now? Like... Bro, I was like, when I'm not capable, who am mm. I? But... This could also be, I didn't deep this until like now, because mm -hmm. um, we haven't spoken about this from this perspective, but this could also be something that could be what God wants you to learn for the transition, because there's a lot of unknown. Oh, I'm learning. <laughs> oh, I'm learning. There's a lot of unknowns Bro. within the transition, and yeah. it's like, you will get to a place where you're like, hmm. Bro, like, I've... <laughs> In this last month, I've actually learned that God is in control. <laughs> yo. Bro. Yo. As in like, not even I surrender or my life is not my own. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, as it's in none like. none of the above, bro. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. In this situation right here. Yeah. I have no, like I have no, I have no power. Mm -hmm. I have no pull. Mm -hmm. There's nothing I can say, do, act, think that will change the situation. This situation is purely all you. Like, there's a situation I'm in the middle of now where genuinely there's nothing. I think I, I told you about it. The one with the different people and just everything kind of goes out. Mm. There is nothing I can do there, Mandy. As in, <laughs> it's not, for this thing to be resolved, there's nothing I can do. Yeah. And I've had to come to a place where I'm like, I'm actually going to stop trying. Because pulling all these pieces and doing all these things is... Sorry, I'm just looking to make sure this thing is recording. Oh. <laughs> because sometimes this camera I like to misbehave. Really? <sighs> it's me. I trust it. In you, we trust. <laughs> 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 but yeah, like, yeah. I've had to come to a place where I'm like, Father, Lord, you are actually in control. Yeah. And you have to be. Mm -hmm. Bro, I was praying and I was like, bro, you better be. Because <laughs> I'm not. Listen. <laughs> I said. If this, if somebody comes to tell me there is no God now, I'm a flip. Bro, like, as yo. in like, <laughs> you are who you say you are. So please, in this situation, I need you to just be that. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I will be still and know that you are God. Mm -hmm. Bro. So like, it's challenged my perspective of myself because... I was on a bit of a roll, like, two months ago. Gym was solid. I was going gym, like, four times a week. I was eating good. My social relationships were on point. Mm -hmm. Like, I was having, like, I was in a great place with my girlfriend, like, because mm -hmm. one of the issues we had faced before was communication because we're long distance. And I was finally getting on track with that. Like, everything was getting back on track, and I was like, guy, I'm flying. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, everything is, everything is solid. Yeah, yeah. And then I just hit this massive truck, bam, and now everything is collapsing. Gym, I'm struggling to go, like, I can't find the time. Mm. My girlfriend, I can't talk to her, the communication is getting shaky. Mm. My work is looking fuzzy, my life is looking fuzzy. My, I can't eat, I can barely even cook for myself. Yeah, and bro. that's a big one. <laughs> that's Maybe. a big one. Bro, when I, when I can't cook for me, you should be worried. No, no, because... Guy was like raw. When Franklin this is isn't bad. cooking, I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> this is kind of weird." Bro, I have a show if called I'm "Let not, Him Cook." If I'm not cooking, ain't nobody worried about that. Cause <laughs> Monday like, ain't cooking half the time. <laughs> she good. She's still eating them noodles. <laughs> if Monday oh. isn't cooking, it's like, oh yeah, yeah. Monday's just Monday's being Monday. Monday. She's had, if Monday even Monday hasn't eaten all day, it's like it's still within the norm. It's like ah, oh, Monday. Oh. <laughs> Stop. Oh, Go eat some food. Yeah. If Franklin hasn't eaten all day. 
Yeah, problem. get worried, man. Problem. If Frank hasn't eaten all day, pray for him. And no that, cap. Was, that was actually me. Raw. I was like, I was like eating breakfast. I just Raw. back in whatever is in the house for lunch. Not eating dinner. Like, wasn't eating. Wasn't blah, blah, blah. and it was just rough, man. But I'm coming near the end of it now. Like I'm recovering now. Mm, I think much. I've learned a few things. One of the things I've learned is that I'm actually a lot stronger than I thought I am. Come on! I'm a lot stronger than I thought I am. Because I thought it would break me. And it didn't. And I'm still standing. Come on now. Hey, I took a few hits. A few gut punches. Just a zoom, zoom, zoom. Bro, weave, weave. No, no, no. Came <laughs> but back. Like, I'm yeah. still here. So it's I'm like, God, damn. God. By the grace of God, I was able to like stay afloat. But I think... Yeah. Another thing I've learned is that, like, <laughs> God really is in it with us, mm-hmm. in the good and the bad. Because yep. we've been talking about it, like, yo, sometimes you go through intense suffering. Oh, yeah, sometimes the mm-hmm. thing is that God is with you. I had to experience it just there. Yeah. As in, times were tough. And I had to still not even show up for God. Like, I had to still have a faith. Mm-hmm. I had to still experience God in the midst of a literal storm. Are we still standing? Still believe. Still believe. Still believe. So, yeah, man. Yeah. That's been my last month. Coming out the end of it now, <laughs> I just want to sleep. <laughs> I, bro. That's fair. I don't, I don't want, to, I don't have no plans. Mm. There's nothing on my plate. No pet projects. No cool yeah. active, bro. I just want to sleep rest. for a while. Get my bearings. And we'll go again. Season of rest. You and this season, season master, <laughs> seasoning. I trust you. <laughs> mm. You don't want season of rest. It's Bro. season of rest. I won't lie. You were saying you're trying to go into a season of rest as well. Though. It's not looking good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not. It's not looking good, bro. It's bruv. not looking good. It's not looking good, bro. And he just, you mm. know, like when you see. Wait, a sorry. black man at a Nigerian party, mm-hmm. they put the plates mm. and they're just adding the jollof. They're just adding jollof. That's my life. <laughs> they're just adding jollof. They're just adding jollof. Wow. They're really care for the protein. They're just packing the jollof. Just bro. carbs and everything. Raw. <laughs> wow. That was a crazy analogy, but like, that's all I could Do you know what? Of. That analogy actually works. Because when you're looking at him packing on that rice, you, you say, actually get worried. Wow. <laughs> say, oh, God. You know, relax. relax. <laughs> Take a touch, <laughs> bro. I can, I can actually see my mom. Okay, are you okay, at him. bro? I can see my mom looking at him. Ah, ah. Oga, you know, calm down, <laughs> bro. Yeah, but like I don't know. I think in all of it, the mm-hmm. main focus is taking care of myself. Yeah. Um. You have to pour into your own cup in order to pour into others. Mm-hmm. Um, take care of my mental. I don't think my mental is too, you know, yagi mm-hmm. yagi these days. Uh, take care of my spiritual self, mm. um, so I can pour into others. You know, so I can mm, continue mm. with all of these yeah, different yeah. jollof plates that I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, like I really want to slow down. Yeah. I really that's my desire. Mm-hmm. But if you've met me. Yeah. Yeah. We don't even need to see it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, <laughs> but I'm being a bit more intentional about it. I'm yeah. being more, um, because like nine to five, especially when you're in tech, you, nine times out of ten, you're not really doing much to be fair. But it's a lot of mental. It's a lot of mental like, load. It's a lot of mental load. Mm-hmm. And like, I find myself exhausted more than if I'm, I've gone around, walked around Dublin and come back. I'm coming back after work and I'm like, I'm going to sleep. Bro. Me that has a high time sleeping. Me that has insomnia. I'm going to sleep willingly. Bro. Crazy. Willingly. <laughs> Bro. Crazy. As in like, yeah, yeah. people don't actually talk about how tiring work is. Like, people say, oh yeah, office jobs, you do nothing. Eh? Yeah, that nothing. Hmm. What have you done? Like <laughs> Bro, <laughs> on the you, bus back. Oh, you look crazy. at the screen, racking your brain for yeah, five yeah. hours. Oh my it's god! It's a lot of screen time. It's, it's a, a lot. lot of, yeah, it's so mentally exhausting. But mm. I'm praying about it. I'm like, God, please grant me a season of rest. Mm-hmm. 
because a lot of things I have to do are actually like responsibilities that have to do with the work of God, a lot. Mm. Even my hobbies, bro. I'm in a bloody gospel choir for, as a hobby. Like, bro, how is that a hobby? That's how. That's how I know you're actual spiritual weapon. Like, like people pick up like fencing or tango dancing, and like and badminton said, or something. <laughs> like, you know I mean, like you know, volleyball, go and jump or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're doing a bro. You went to join a choir? No, but. join the MCU choir though. We're waiting for y'all. Anyway, sorry, look. Are you plug. guys? Are you guys still hiring? It's not for you. <laughs> no, let, mind it, let me join. It's not for you. I can sing. What can you do? Wait, let me show you. Let me oh, show you my skills. Go on. We're holding nothing. Please hold some. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Hold some back. This is how I know you're Hold some back. This is I know you're here. This is I know you're here. This is I know you're here. We're holding nothing. Are you sure? <laughs> no. Hold some back, please. Nah, hold some back is crazy. Yeah. Hey. That hold was a some... massive declaration. Please keep it. Nah, that song is actually so nasty, man. Withholding oh, nothing. I'm, I'm even getting flashbacks more. We're not, we're not, we're not we're going not, there. We're not going there. Oh my goodness. We're, ne- we're not, we're going, not there. going there today. Man. Uh, mm. But what's been on your mind, though? What's been on my what mind? What has been on your mind? Bro, there's a bunch of things I'm thinking about all mm. the time. I think... One of the things that's been on my mind recently is like creating, creating. Cause like I stepped into content creation. Mm-hmm. I'm on a break now cause I'm tired. <laughs> Not even from content creation, just from life, but I'm tired. A pause. <laughs> no, literally I had to hit a big pause. But yeah. I've been thinking a lot about creating. Mm-hmm. I've been thinking about like what it means to create genuinely mm-hmm. because there is, in my eyes, there is like genuine creation and then there's counterfeit creation. Genuine creation is when you actually like sit down and take a time to like plan and organize and like how can I create something beautiful that will touch someone's heart? Mm-hmm. And then there's counterfeit creation that's like how will I get a reaction? How will I get a response? Mm. How will I get views, likes, shares, yeah, all that type something of stuff? Quick, quick, quick. Something quick. How do I grow this thing fast? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And like this thing is actually annoying me. Let it breathe. But like because. <laughs> Stepping into content creation, the first thing I was thinking was, how do I grow this thing fast? Like, how do we move? Dude, I'm going to be an overnight sensation. Grow overnight sensation. Mm-hmm. Like, how do we move? How do we grow? Mm-hmm. And I found myself mentally and both, like, in my creation, trying to, like, hop on trends. So, like, yeah. I've seen something before. Let me do my Let own me do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've seen, I've seen this, I've seen that, I've seen this, I've seen that. And I realized just how mentally draining it is. Mm-hmm. Because when you're creating like that, you're not even like you're not even engaging with your art. It's just like you're slapping Copy and paste, copy and paste. Copy and paste. You're just slapping one random thing together and throwing it out. And then I was thinking about it for a long time because like it made me it made me look at myself kind of like from a self worth perspective. Like okay. now I'm attaching the amount of views or likes mm. a video gets to my self worth and yeah. it's just a mess. And then I had to pause and I think I was praying about it. And I was like, raw, like, how do I create genuinely, like, honestly, openly from the bottom of my heart? And I feel like what came to me was touch the heart of one person. One person. If I could touch someone's heart, whether to make them laugh, whether to make them think, whether to, like, make them engage in a way that they wouldn't have engaged before, like, to genuinely, like, impact, leave some sort of residue in someone, Mm. as opposed to just, like putting out copy and paste of all the other rubbish that's yeah, there. Yeah. Like, if I approach it like that, how does it look? And then I actually try to approach it like that, like thinking of original ideas. And I was like, rah, this is different. That's how I came up with When Your Pastor is a Thief. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that video. Somebody say, the lad. The lad. Right in the comments, please, I'm begging you. The lad. <laughs> If you don't know, then you miss out. Somebody say the <laughs> lab. Bro, I love that it's video. It's my favorite thing ever. Oh my God. I love that video because the reason I love that video is like, I actually sat down to think about that and then I tried genuinely to execute it. And even when I was creating it, I just sat and I was like, I want to make this fun. I want to make this mm. beautiful. And I know I could have done it better, but that was the times when I was like, genuinely, honestly, I want to make something that like, I want to make something for someone mm-hmm. to make them like enjoy it or engage with or like 
take something from this mm. as opposed to just creating something cheap that like you just see it as like oh and then you scroll past yeah, yeah, yeah like not just to catch someone's attention but to like get someone to engage mm-hmm. do you know what i mean yeah. and then like thinking about how i'll do that if i go on to youtube now mm. i like what type of video would i make that could genuinely like touch someone as opposed to just being another one of everything that's out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or becoming, becoming a copy and paste of, of a others. famous creator mm-hmm. that already exists. So I've been thinking a lot about creating okay. and creativity. And just that type of like, how do we create beauty? Mm. As opposed to just creating a copy of what, I, what already exists. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know what's funny as well? Mm-hmm. So obviously, you know, I went to Equip recently. Mm-hmm. And like equipment, I trust you, bro. Do you see me, bro? You see my guns, bro. I'm equipped. I, I trust you. When you came back from equipped, we were talking. I said, Yeah, you went and got equipped. I'm equipped, bro. Nah, Don't that's, even... that's a serious bicep yeah. action right there. Christian Union equipped, amen. Crazy, crazy. Um, one of my seminars or EMTs, they're mm-hmm. like, There's no need to explain anyway. It was mm-hmm. like just a teaching. There was three different teachings, you had to pick one, and I picked one. Um, Our Satisfying God, it was what it was called. And mm-hmm. it was all about God the Creator and how He created us so we can create. Mm-hmm. And this man, first day, was like, Do you know that God has commanded us to create? Hey, Papa. Like, Bro. your ability to create isn't just, Oh, it's something I do on my day off. You know, it's something that's meaningless. Oh, it's just. I can do that. Hmm. Find your sweet spots, which is something that you can either do forever or do with your eyes closed or do willingly or like whatever. Hmm. That's what God has given you and commanded you to do. Bro. I said. (laughs) Bro. And that command is as an expression in you of himself. Of him. Mm-hmm. Bro. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, Bro. so this small, small, small creative abilities is actually, it's not a waste of time. It's not, especially when you're like, sorry, I'm African, so that always come up. Mm. But like, it's not a waste of time. Mm-hmm. It's not something that, oh, it's ah, just, they're just playing around. The kids mm. are just messing. No, these are, this is an extension of God in me. Mm. And like in my creation i want to give him glory in so many di- my apologies Take so many touch. different ways wow I, I, it's okay you can slow down you actually can't be serious like <laughs> but yeah mm. i was like bro tell me more bro i was just sitting there like tell me more about yeah. this and he was just like yeah and what was it? Did I text you this or did I say it to you? I don't no, know. No, no, you said it to me on the okay, phone. Okay, because I was like, Franklin, we've been commanded to create. Bro. Go create. <laughs> Go create. Like, oh man, I've been thinking about the whole creating thing because like, like you were saying, when we're, not when we're, the sort of African ideology or like outlook towards creating is like, oh, this is just something that you are doing. But shall you still go to school? Mm. You still go and read book, mm-hmm. and then you go out like, for the most part, find cool. creating okay. isn't approached seriously mm-hmm. or thought of in any seriousness or sort of like addressed with any seriousness. Like for the most part, it's it's stifled. Like when you're creating, it's like, what are you doing? You should be studying. Like you are wasting time. You are wasting time. Do you know what I mean? Wait, are you looking at notes or something? I'm trying to find a call. Okay. There were so many quotes. There were so many. I don't actually have my copy, which is so sad because mm-hmm. all my notes of the of the actual uh, seminar yeah. is there. But there's one of the quotes here. Mm. I'm going to have you read it because we all know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you know, you know. <laughs> okay. A church in Los Angeles that ministers to Hollywood artists includes among its core principles this wonderful statement. Creativity is the natural result of spirituality. Exactly. Those in relationship with the creator should be the most creative of all. 
bro. That's wild. Those in relationship with the creator should be the most creative of all. Bro, that's real serious. And I think I definitely agree. Like, I feel, I wouldn't say closest. Because, again, closeness is relative. Mm -hmm, Mm -hmm. Everybody would just start doing anyhow now if I say that. Oh, what do you mean? You have to pray three hours to be close. (laughs) Let's just calm down. Let's just take a touch. Yeah. Let's just take a touch. (laughs) But, like, I genuinely feel that sort of connection Mm -hmm. to God and that connection to myself when I make a genuine attempt to be creative. Mm -hmm. So whether it's I'm writing poems that, like, are not just information, but I'm genuinely expressing something, or when I'm journaling, or when I'm, like, speaking, but, like, I'm putting my words together in a way to kind of, like, pass across a message as opposed to just talking. Because there's days when I'm just talking and you know (laughs) I'm just yapping. But there's a time when I'm trying to, like construct my words and almost put them together in a creative way like when i'm being creative when i'm bringing forth something out of nothing Mm -hmm. to kind of inspire and like build up other type of stuff like i feel like that's who i've been created to be Mm -hmm. like that feels like (laughs) it's like a lock and key model and that's me being the key to -hmm. open the door do you know what i mean i'm like raw like God has given us this ability to create. I was actually thinking of it recently. Like, this is what separates us from the animals. Yo. This, like, this is what God has given. Like, Mm. this is, when it says we were made in his image, this is what it means. This is what it looks like, yeah. Like, come on. God created this earth with so much flav. Bro. What's our, like, whoa. Let me tell you something. I said, let there be light in that. God did not create this earth just purely out of function. Mm-hmm. Like, this he created... Beauty. Bro, like... There's so much beauty. Why is the sky blue? That's not functional. He gave it landscape. He gave it color. Like, if this world to be, were to be 100% functional, then it just nearly wouldn't be as beautiful as mm-hmm. it is. But God took his time. He painted and he constructed and he gave variety and he gave so many like different intricate bits Mm -hmm. and not everything had to be anything. Some things could just be and they're beautiful. Some of these flowers, I'm just like, bro, we don't need this many varieties. Yo, like we really don't. (laughs) But you thought like Mm -hmm. you thought it best to give us this many Mm -hmm. because you just wanted you wanted to express that nature of yourself, that creativeness, that beauty. And that's what you've given us. Brother. To create Created that, in his image. That and be- in his likeness. Bro, to bring out that beauty. Just genuine, unadulterated beauty. In the way that you can. The way that you are able to express it. Like, that's what God has put in you. That's crazy. That's fun. That's exciting. And like... Actually, I guess it brings up the question. Do you feel like you do that? Hmm. <laughs> Is that a question or an attack? <laughs> it's just a question, uh, bro. I'm asking myself the same it question. It feels like this. <laughs> do you feel like you do that? Do you feel like you do it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think I do it to the full extent, you know? Because mm-hmm. you know what happens? Whenever I tell people I'm a singer, one, people say, do you write music? Mm. And I'm like, what can I not just be a singer? I said I was a singer. That's crazy. What part of my introduction tells you songwriter? I said I was a singer. I'm not going to lie, though. As someone who doesn't exist in the musical world because of my clear limitations. <laughs> You're not limited in Jesus' name. <laughs> if you said singer, I would have assumed songwriter too. Because they go hand in hand. They go, no, but I can be an individual. Oh, can sorry. Difference. But to be fair, mm-hmm. it's something that I know I can do. I just don't explore it. Yeah. Because in my mind, a songwriter, you just have to wake up and you write the song. Mm. You wake up, God has given you a song. <laughs> that's the only way I know a songwriter to me or people that they just look outside boom they have a song they have a song wow like I don't think about it as a muscle to exercise mm-hmm. or as something that you can actually learn and like learn how to construct it mm. it's something that is constructed it's something there's a structure there's a flow there's yeah. a whatever cause like you might want to express your um, feelings but to put that into words 
not just in the words, but words that make sense, not just words that make sense, but that flow mm-hmm. and like are in the melody that you're in and all yeah, of these yeah, kind yeah. of things. It's actually a skill yes. more than just an art. So I actually said it to myself recently. I was like, I want to start exercising that muscle a bit more mm-hmm. because I have written stuff in mm-hmm. the past. I don't look at those again, please. Mm. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> and I think the only person here in Cork mm-hmm. that managed to get me to write anything was Maya. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Maya. And like we put out a thing on Instagram mm-hmm. of the song I wrote. Okay. And it was just a little thing. It was like a little mm, 30 second, one minute situation. Mm-hmm. When I tell you, like when Maya posted this on her page, because I don't even have videos of it. Mm-hmm. That's how much, that's how detached I was from the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone was literally like, what is this? Like, people were reposting it like crazy. I was like, baby, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Everybody should just slow down now. I was like, raw, like, oh, mm. okay. Yeah. Like, I didn't say anything philosophical in it. Mm. Um, it was actually the time where I was really, really anxious about singing like i really just wanted to like disappear Mm. i really wanted to just stop creating because my main way of creating is singing and whatever Mm -hmm. i could just every day i found somebody that was better than me Mm. whether that was a five-year-old child damn you just beefing with five-year-olds bro you know it's worse when there's like a younger kid that's better than you like musically like i'm I'm not gonna lie that's (sighs) always that's always so rough that's always so rough i say yeah i just want to head (laughs) But what do you mean? I wanted to really give up. And like, mm. so then Maya reached out to me. She was like, we should have a jam session. I was like, <laughs> I'm not even a great singer. Why would I go to a jam session? Mm. And I know Maya does a lot of originals. And I was like, one of the days I was just so like overwhelmed by a lot of the thoughts. I was like, you know what? Let me try and write something. Mm-hmm. It could be for like, it could be something funny. Like yeah, I'm not yeah, going to yeah. take this seriously at all. Um... I think one of the first things I got was like the hook or whatever you want to call it. Um, It's like possibilities, dream big, never hide your light. Referring to the verse that speaks of you're the light of the world and the light doesn't go under the table. Come on now. Possibilities. Who said that? Wasn't it, Jesus? (sighs) Hardly. It was the best man on the planet that said it. Okay. My father. My father. Yeah. My (laughs) father. What accent is that one? Don't worry about it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> cool. Um, how, um, possibilities, dream big, run towards your heart. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of just referring to the whole oh, treasure and heart thing. Mm-hmm. There was something in there, but anyway, I can't remember. Mm. Um, possibilities, stop trying to be your worst enemy. Mm. Possibilities, possibilities. Uh, dream big. Um, never hold it back, bro. That's the word right there. So, even though I was stuttering the whole way through, but <laughs> yeah, that's word right there. So that was kind of like a reminder to myself. The whole mm. song was a reminder to myself. Mm. Um, first line: Remember, remember, you were born for greatness. Remember, you were called to be heard. Mm. Remember, possibilities for you are endless. Mm. And like, these are just things I was telling myself. Mm. Um, and then it just goes, that was pretty much it. Like, I, I wrote like eight lines yeah, yeah, yeah. of words. Mm. But there, I find myself singing them time, at times where I'm just like, yeah. Bro, bro, that's real serious. That's real serious. Why don't you, well, you said you want to exercise the muscle more. I was thinking the same thing, you know, about like poetry and just speaking. Yeah. I was like, bro, like the people that have it, have it, and the people that don't have it, don't have it. Like, I didn't realize that, like, I actually have to write poems to write poems. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. I didn't realize that I have they to. They don't write. just download from heaven every day. Bro, they don't just. Sometimes. Come from... Sometimes. Sometimes maybe good. Sometimes yeah. maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> bro, because my first poem came to me. Mm-hmm. I did, bro, my first poem came out. Of my head in like 20 minutes mm. i was in bed i was probably on the verge of tears it had been such a difficult time and i just started typing and the words were just coming to me bit by bit that's thank you jesus oh that's how i, I wrote really that, like poem. that poem it's a good poem i think that's my best poem ever yeah. 
like I, I don't it's want to say poem. something like, "Oh, I'm never gonna hit those heights," because that's a unique poem. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. I'm just never gonna write one exactly like, like that, that again. Yeah. Yeah. But like, from then on, all the other poems I've had, like all the other poems I've written, I've had to labor through them. Like I remember there was one poem. I'm not gonna lie to you. Most of my poems have been from my babes. Not going to like. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Main inspiration. I love. Like, he is the muse. I love that baby. Guys, you don't know about Slow it. Slow down. You don't know about it. <laughs> Have you ever been anybody's muse? You don't know about it. Please, go to bed. Continue, my brother. <laughs> I love that babe, man. But, like, I think... Because I had written Thank You, Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I want to try to write some more poems. And, like, I knew how much she loved poetry. So one Valentine's, I was like, okay, I'm going to write her a poem. And the poem was so hard to write. It took me, like, two weeks of working on it, maybe, like, five minutes a day to mm. get it right. I got it right. She loved the poem. Raw. She, she loved the poem. I was like, eh, hey, I got you now. I got yeah. you now. <laughs> and Ooh. then from oh. then on, I just started, like, going back to poetry bit by bit, bit by bit. And then I think I didn't write poems for a while because when I'm writing, it's usually because I'm reading. And then I stopped reading for a long time. And then I picked back up reading and then I got some more motivation. And like, I usually used to write poems in my low moments. So I remember I was going through a really low moment. Like I was struggling a lot with porn during the time. And I was like, I read this book and it was talking about how you can fight porn by developing hobbies and investing into those hobbies. So in my head, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to make an active attempt to replace porn with poetry. Mm-hmm. So I decided I was going to write, I think, a poem a day for like three weeks. That did not happen. But I still got like seven poems out in like mm-hmm. two weeks. And then I wrote all those poems and then I put them in a little book and I gave them to my girlfriend as a present. Hey, it's calm down. Slow down. Again, I love my babes. I need you to understand that. They weren't all, they weren't all, like, love poems. But, like, I wrote all the poems and I wanted her to see them. One of those poems was actually the one I presented at Black Tones. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was one of those. I think it was your smile I missed. I'm not saying T shining from coast to coast is affectionate. Sorry, that one should be a rap song. Ooh. Somebody please petition to make that into a song. Guys, I cannot. I love love. You need to can. Start canning. Don't can out, please. <laughs> But, oh, yeah, man, raw. like, as much as her love for poems gave me inspiration to write poems, mm. I had to, to some extent, detach my poetry just from, like, I can't just write poems because of my girlfriend. Fair. I have to be willing to write poems to write poems. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I think in the past year or two, I've been trying to write more just poems, just just write Put words on the page, see how you're feeling. I haven't written much recently because, like, I used to write written pieces, I used to write poems, da, 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 da. but I think recently, just with the weight of the way things have been, mm-hmm. I've just been thinking responsibility, 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 responsibility. Like, I haven't been having fun. Actually, bro, this is like a realization for me. Why am I not having fun, bro? Ah. I need to start having fun because yeah. I love writing. Yeah. I love writing. Like, I used to do, like, two pages long journal entries. Where I'm just we were writing. just talking about journaling earlier as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just expressing myself. And, like, most of them, I'm writing them to God as well. Yeah. Like, I'm just, just expressing prayer, myself. And then sometimes I look at them and I'm like, yo, this is heat. If I put this out, like... It's my opinion. It was, I mean, like, yeah. they, they could pay me for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I put in some big words in there, like, <laughs> obliterate, manifestate. So, you know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. You don't, you don't know. They're not in the Congolese dictionary. You don't Ta-ta. know. <laughs> I, think, I think I ever got sidetracked. But yeah, mm. we're talking about like creation mm. and creating and like mm. working that muscle. I want to work that muscle. And mm. I think the period of my life I'm entering now is a period where I'm going to have to work that muscle. So I think it's an opportunity for me to really step into that because... Mm. I genuinely love creating. Like, the hardest part of creating has been sharing what I create with other people. 
because then you're opening yeah. it up to be screwed. Opinions. You're, you're and... opening it up to be scrutinized yeah. and all of that. But like, I'm trying to break through that barrier again because I love creating mm. so much. So it's just that kind of, it's that kind of tug of war. Yeah. I want to live a life where I can make a living based off my creations. I want to try go for that. Okay. I want to try go for that because I love creating that much. Mm. But I'm like. Honestly, the question is, am I good enough for that? Not going to lie to you. That is the question. If you see some of the people that's gone viral, not even, forget viral, because that's like a... Yeah, that's kind of superficial, yeah. People that have made careers starting from dumb things, Mm. like ridiculous things. Mm. Like, I don't know, because our generation is really used to this stuff. Mm-hmm. But, like, how is someone buying clothes with their own money, putting on a camera and trying it on in front of us? And, like, when I say that, I can speak of someone like Patricia Bright, for example. Mm. Now it's, like, a fashion sensation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was buying clothes. I do shopping all the time. Bro, <laughs> I, be- <laughs> I, I shop have for clothes. I it's have a necessity. Je- she I needs have, the clothes. Bro, I have jeans. <laughs> What? She needs to wear it. I have the trousers. <laughs> like, I have the pantalon. <laughs> the pantalon. <laughs> Bro, I've got them. I've got the pantalon. Bro. So like, mm. you know, and I think that's the beauty. Like, to be fair, my platform is TikTok. Like, I like TikTok mm. as a place where I just be like, hmm? I'll just throw something here, I'll throw something there. Um, But I think it applies in all platforms regardless because it's all about the mindset. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Of what it is you're trying to do. Mm. And now that I know that we've been commanded to kids, everybody out of my way. Bro. Everybody get out of my way. Get out, like... Because this creative journey, whether I have to scream and try through it or I go through it, chill, mm. I'm going through it. Mm-hmm. Like, at this point, nothing is going to stop me from creating. I think, for me, I just want to get to a point where I am not so obsessed about blowing up. Mm. I'm trying to like I'm trying to put that out of my mind because like there's a lot of people who create that I look up to. Mm-hmm. But like it's like it's literally what we were talking about yesterday. A lot of people that I look up to, but those guys have a portfolio of work. Of work. They have a body of, of work. Years even. Bro, they could have years of work. Mm-hmm. So even if right now they're putting out mid, people can be like, nah, but last year he used to hit. He used to cook. Yeah. And like I don't even have like the a basic portfolio to work mm-hmm. off. Like I'm at the starting line mm-hmm. and I'm looking at someone near the finish line and mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, I want what they have. Comparison but I haven't put in joy, bro. close to the amount of work that they've put in. Even even if I feel that my content is better than theirs, mm. I haven't put in the legwork. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, have yeah. not put in the legwork. So like it's pure entitlement to try mm. and expect what they have when I haven't put in the work that they have. Mm. And then it's also, to some extent, blind faith and willful blind... Yeah, blind faith and willful blindness to say, Mm. God, can you give me what they have? Off one. They've put in... You just got here. They've put in 500, I've put in one. And I'm like, God, can I receive what? Eh? That's kind of bold still. I know they said come boldly, but damn. Bro... Bro, the Jesus, Bible says come boldly, Jesus but say, damn, you Jesus, run with that. Jesus That's crazy. Christ, shameless audacity, and I said, yes, boss. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> so, like, yeah. I'm having to flip and grow up, man, and having to be realistic with myself. And again, it's a journey for me. Mm-hmm. Like, for you watching, it's content. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's a journey. So nobody would, and nobody, nobody even cares. But for me, it's a journey. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm trying to genuinely, honestly walk out the journey, pick up the things that I want, that I need to pick up, and just, like, go for it and enjoy it. Because, bruv, I've got so many ideas. Like, I've got a a dashboard full of ideas. I could make 50 different videos based off the ideas that I have. Mm. Not all of them will be good, fair. But I have so many ideas. But I'm so crippled, or I have been so crippled with, like, what will people think mm. or how will they do or what will the numbers look like that has just stopped me from genuinely creating with my whole heart 
Like, when your pastor is a thief, I created that with my heart. I know that for sure. I was so happy putting out that video because I was like, yeah, so funny. regardless. He's inserting the video within this. I actually, it's I actually would. Hilarious. <laughs> like, all my days. I don't it's like. Funny I'm, that's not even to toot my own horn. I just liked making the video. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, I came home from work. Within five minutes, I had that suit on and I was recording. <laughs> <laughs> and I was proper acting as well like I had the camera and I was like oh. yeah. do you know who I was trying to channel when I was when I was recording can I should I say it out loud <laughs> do you know no 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 it's not bad it's not bad it's not bad okay do you remember when we went open circle and David was preaching mm. I was trying to channel that so you're channeling David <laughs> Not as a thief, but as a preacher. Oh. Not as a thief. Come on. A... I thought you were going to say something wild. I, I, I think I know him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was you're, like, oh my God. You're crazy. Man. <laughs> bro, I had the mic and I was like, hey man, yeah. hallelujah, hey man. Yeah, you're a weird ref. Ah, but no. yeah, the whole creative conversation is interesting. Because I had this conversation with someone recently enough, actually. And this person was like, yo, I love creating. I love to create. I have a literal portfolio of art that I've created. Music, poetry, written pieces, all this type of stuff. Like, mm. I've got some stuff in the bag. But I don't want to share it. I don't want to... Ah, why is my truth jumping? I don't want to put it on the internet because mm. I don't want it to be... Like, I don't want it to be scrutinized by people. Mm. I don't want... like. I don't want people to have an opinion on my art. I love my art. I want to keep it to myself. And we're having a conversation back and forth. And at some point, I just had to be like, yo, like, one, people don't actually care that much. They don't. Like, hey, let's be honest. Like, they'll see it. They could say whatever they want, but then mm. people are going to get on with their lives. Yeah. But yeah. two, more importantly, like, this is yours. Mm. Like, this, like this, is, this is an expression of yourself. And... For the fact that it could touch someone's heart, for the fact that it could motivate or strengthen or mm. guide, that's more than enough to put it out. Like even if even if it touches one person, mm -hmm. just one person, that's more than enough reason to put it out yeah. and like give it legs. Mm. Like for the very fact that no, not for the very fact. Like yes, it could be scrutinized by other people, like hundred mm. percent. But for that one person that might like it, would you do it for them? Because yeah. There's one person, I'm going to shout out my boy, man, David. Everything I do, he's, mm, he gives me encouragement. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Everything. And I'm like, damn. Sometimes I just make videos for him. <laughs> no cap. Sometimes I put an out like, I know David's going to love this one, man. Mm. And like, having a person in mind who you want to touch their heart and who you want to actually motivate, I think it helps you like blur out all the other noise. The noise. Yeah. It's funny because I saw something, well, not saw something like that, but like this kind of thought process came to me from studying the Bible because I recognized that like, yo, Jesus was a religious teacher. Mm -hmm. He taught. He mm -hmm. was a rabbi. Mm -hmm. And his teachings were subject to the scrutiny of other rabbis. Yeah. And they okay, acted in the synagogue. Bro, the, the entire synagogue was like... Who do you mean? Bro, they not <laughs> only disagreed with him, mm. they discredited him. Mm -hmm. Bro, they were talking crazy about him to his face. They said he heals with the power of Beelzebub, mm -hmm. a literal demon. They said this power is the devil's power. Mm. And yet he still healed and he still taught and he still showed. This man it. shouted, uh, if you see me, you've seen the father. Jesus was a scary nah, guy. Nah, man. Jesus was a cold Jesus guy. Bold, man. Jesus was a cold, Ooh, Jesus was a cold guy. He's too smooth. Jesus was too smooth. Jesus was a cold guy, man. Like, what? Like, what? Bro. And Jesus still did, like, in the midst of the criticism and the scrutiny, Jesus did it mm. because there were people who needed to receive what he had to give. In the same you have way. You say that again. Sorry. Mm. Rewind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Uh. Jesus, like, in the midst of the criticism and the scrutiny, mm. Jesus still did what he had to do. Jesus still put out what he was given to put out. And why is that? For the sake of the people who were going to receive. And for the sake of the people who did receive. For the sake of the people who did receive. Mm -hmm. Jesus put out 
the content that God gave him. Jesus would have been an influencer. Bro. Just saying. No cap. <laughs> it would have been on Instagram live. Like, yo, creator. Pharisees. How, what did he even call them? Snake? <laughs> yo, Snake? Yo, Python? Yo, yo, yo. Nah, Jesus is a funny guy. Everything. But yeah. yeah, my like, he like, he still did like, it's not that, I don't want to say it's not that criticism didn't matter to him. But like, criticism was irrelevant. Because the... Bro, the goal, the objective the is ob- way bigger. It's way bigger. It's bigger than us, bro. The objective was the people. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. literally like, it's the same with creativeness. It's the same with ministry. It's mm-hmm. the same with relationship. It's the same with all those things. Like, what is like, what is the goal? What is the focus? If the goal is impact or acclaim or fame or recognition, it's superficial. Mm-hmm. And it can't last. But if the goal is people, loving, caring for, respecting people, and like you're looking at it with the goal of how can I touch people's hearts? How can I help people? How can I motivate people? How can, how can, I, can I glorify I... God in all of this? Bro, like it helps you put on the blinders to the outside noise. Mm. But more importantly, that is how you touch people's hearts. Like that's how you get to people's hearts. Mm-hmm. As opposed to giving it all the flavor in the world and doing all of that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, that's where I'm trying to get to. Amen. And the last month was me rooting through the whole mess of trying to be the best. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now I'm trying to be at the point of, I'm actually not the best. Like, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just starting. Mm. But if I were to actively try and create beautiful art, what would that look like? Yeah. So I'm at I'm at the starting point. Mm. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Damn, I know none of that was coming out. Honestly, wow. this wasn't even planned. This wasn't the episode that we planned. Bro, this wasn't we had something completely different in mind. Like this and this. Like <laughs> light and, and, and darkness. Bro. But mm. I think it's important. Because a lot of the people that we know, that we, that even listen to the bench, a lot of them are creatives. Mm-hmm. Um, it's great that we can get to a place of recognizing that what cre- being creative means, mm-hmm. even from a standpoint of a Christian, even from God's perspective. Because mm-hmm. that's what this whole thing is about. You're created in his likeness. Go and create, bro. What the hell? You're created in his likeness. Go and create. Like Make something beautiful. beautiful. Make something beautiful. And let the objective be bigger than money. the likes, the money, the fame, the, fame, the likes, recognition. the views. And he'll strengthen you through it. Bro. Like, I think... <sighs> It's something that I've looked at a lot just in terms of like, what is your motivation mm. genuinely? Because like, are you familiar with like the red pill community, all that sort of like manosphere, high value men, kiniko, kiniko. <laughs> like, okay, it's essentially this thought process for men mm. where it's like, you have to be physically strong. Mm. Yeah, like the goal for a man, the ultimate goal. Physically strong, so like gym strong, ripped, da, 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 da. Yeah. have a load of money, yeah. you can get as many girls as you want. Okay. Like High value man. High, literally, high value man. Mm. Fast cars, big house, da, 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 all that type of stuff. And it's like, it's selling, or they're selling young men this ideology that like, when you have all these outside superficial things, mm-hmm. then you have landed, then you have become. Then you have value. Then you have value. So you're teaching people or they're teaching young men to put their value, like to value themselves based on these things. Mm -hmm. But I just think if we were teaching young men to find the intrinsic value in themselves and create beauty, actual genuine beauty that can strengthen people, we wouldn't be seeing a lot of the mess that we're seeing today Mm -hmm. in the dating sphere. Let me off my eyeglass. Bro, in the day, Yo, 
in not the, the eyeglasses. Da- in the dating sphere, mm. in the work sphere, mm. in the re- in the religious yeah. sphere. Let's the talk about relational, it. Relational, like family, yeah. in the fam- like in everything. If we were teaching people to create beauty, if we were teaching people to value beauty, if we were te- teaching people that like what let your motivation be to love mm. strengthen guide protect others like if others, we were teaching yeah. people that then people, the world the love of people bro like it's even a com- it's co- <laughs> is it not the command that jesus <laughs> gave <you>? hey god <laughs> like my, <laughs> <laughs> no. why are we even traveling Mandy, I when forgot. I say, when I say nothing We're new, going to... Just to come back to the starting point. Tell us. Tell us what does the Bible say. What does the Bible say? No, let me, I actually need to pull it. I actually yeah. need to pull it. Because, like, this is important. Because, uh-uh. This is important. Uh-uh. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. So, when the Bible said that there's nothing new under the sun, it meant it. Because we're saying the same things in different fonts. But, um, yeah. God was like, your lives will be easier. You make wiser decisions. You will be slightly careful. You will just, I don't know, like, I don't know. No, I'm, so, trying, I'm trying to find this. Sorry, give me a second. No, 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 work away. I don't know, like, what? Love people, lads. Ah, uh, am I, wait, nah. What, what? What are you talking about? Was it the one where he said, the, what is the greatest commandment? Because it was two. There was one where he said, above all else, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm-hmm. And then there's one where he said, there's two greatest commandments, but really it's one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Da, 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 da. Love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. The one I have here is only, is Mark 12. Mark 12. That's a love your... Um, okay. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the second commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Mm-hmm. So the first is love God. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. So like an extension of the love you have for your neighbor is to provide value for them in their life. Mm. So if we were geared towards providing value for people in the hope, like... As an expression of love, as opposed to competitiveness or superiority mm. or trying to subdue them, da, 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 like if that was if that if that was the mindset that we all developed, mm. the world would look completely different. Com- mm. Like if we if we even take it to the dating sphere, like two people show up to a date trying to outdo each other. Two people show like two people show up trying to outdo mm. each other. Mm. Two people show up trying to be superior mm. and take the lead. So it's a competition, and whoever wins subdues the other. But if the two people came together trying to genuinely know each other and love each other and provide value, mm. it could be like, oh, I actually say I can't provide value to you. Okay, we go. Or we're like, oh, actually, I actually, I think this can work. Like, mm. I think we can bring genuine value to each other's lives. Like. That's a relationship built on solid ground, as opposed to this garbage competition style. Like, it's even, <laughs> bro, it's what's happening with a lot of male friendships. Yeah, I won't lie. Male friendships are really toxic. It's very confusing. The girlies. Yeah, shout so, out. Oh, you think you. female friendships are ah, toxic? Ah, calm down. No, oh, we won't, we won't, we, see the way you, whoa, we won't do that. Whoa, you raised your decibels there, mate. <laughs> all right, all right. Calm down. Yes, yes, you know. I won't go there. But like, bro, it's one of the things I see with male friendships mm-hmm. where one has to be the alpha male. Yeah, yeah, one yeah. One has yeah. to be the big dog, 100%. the group leader. Uh-huh, 100%. One has to be the group leader. And now the friend group isn't geared toward providing genuine value for each other. Mm-hmm. Friend group isn't geared towards love. Friend group is geared towards superiority. Mm-hmm. Who has more? Who is better? I realized this a couple of months ago <laughs> in a funny way, mm. but it's one of the ways that you can distinguish between pride and faith. Okay. Faith says, I want to have, or no, faith asks God, can I have? Mm-hmm. Pride says, can I have more than that person? Okay. 
that's what we see mm -hmm. in the friend group. Mm -hmm. So we have A, B, C. Mm -hmm. All of them have. Mm -hmm. But Oga wants to have more than all. Because if he has more than everybody else, then he's superior. Yeah. Then he's the big dog. So his ceiling is he has more than all of them. As opposed to as far as all his potential can go. It doesn't matter. Because among this, his current circle, he's the There's best. Yeah, yeah. And that's like, that's the kind of thinking that just, it keeps us limited. It keeps us confused. It keeps us looking left and right for who's trying to come for what we have. As opposed to, I want to love and I want to create value. Mm. Like, I want to touch and transform people's lives. Like, I'm looking at the people that have genuinely transformed people's lives. There's this guy I follow a lot on Instagram, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. His name is Ben Patrick. Yeah. And he does this thing called ATG, where he's helping people essentially rebuild their knees. Okay. Build stronger knees. And like he's been putting out all this content about like strengthening your knees, different ways to train. Mm -hmm. That's how, bro, you see me jumping all this time. It's his regime that I went on. Mm. And like, regime sounds crazy. But like, it's his routine. Regime, but I'm just not gonna. Sorry. Gonna let you Sorry. Cook. Regime. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. <laughs> Whatever. But like, it's his routine I picked up. And I was mm -hmm. just thinking of it like, I can imagine just how much money he's made from this. Mm. Cool. Because people, you're like, you have to pay to get the full thing. Yeah. But money aside, the amount of value that he's brought to the people's amount of people lives. He's helped. Bro, he's changed lives. Yeah. He's changed so many lives by putting out this content that genuinely helps and like brings value and heals. Like people's needs are receiving healing mm -hmm. from the like from the content he's putting out. Mm. As opposed to some like idiot just copying rubbish that they've seen online. Yeah. Like, there's him, Ben Patrick, and then there's someone like Liver King. Do you know about Liver King? Oh, man. Sorry. Dif two completely different spheres. Fair. Liver King is basically this guy who was promoting this um, ancestral lifestyle. So, yeah, eating raw meat. Yeah, doing all these gorilla workouts. <laughs> Gorilla yes. workout. Yeah, sleeping on you're sleeping on hard beds. Yeah, just and the, the ground, was, <laughs> just the ground. The guy was ripped, ripped, like muscles popping out everywhere. Mm. And you're like, oh my god, if I eat these strange foods and if I work out like this man, I could be like him. Mm. Turns out he was pumping one hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth of steroids into his body a year. Whoa, <laughs> bro, ten BZ's <laughs> worth of steroids into his body. Yo. 10k bro he was selling supplements telling people that if you take these you could be like me and do you know what he was taking steroids yo 10k worth of, ten thousand dollars worth of steroids a month that's grade <laughs> a high class steroid that's crazy bro so you have someone who's creating and generating actual mm. value and then you have someone who's stealing yeah. for the likes and the views and the acclaim this one went they got exposed. It's mm. gone down. Because yeah. you've lost your credibility. You're a liar mm -hmm. and a thief. And the truth is not in you. But this guy, he continues to go up slowly, gradually. Why? Because what he brought is actual genuine value. Yeah. As opposed to just trying to get his bit and go. Yeah. He's going higher, yes he is. Mm -hmm. I'm <laughs> going higher, higher, yes. yes I am. Am. <laughs> 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 That's Bro. like our theme song, by the way. Hey, Amen. But yeah, man, that whole thing just to say, like, pursue value, mm. pursue beauty. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to tell myself because it feels like such a strong draw towards pursuing, like, cheap, quick success. So, like, Bro, like, I didn't understand how hard this stuff can be. This is our generation, man. Microwave generation. Bro. Like, I need it now. And I'm having to restrain myself and be like, it's going to take time. Mm. And I need to provide value. Actual value. But, but yeah, man, I think that's me. Wow. I think that's me. I loved it. And I think it's an encouraging word to me mm -hmm. as a creative. And I think to many other creatives. Um... Yeah, seek to create value. Seek to create seek beauty. Seek to create beauty. 
bro. Like, you walk into an art gallery and it's just beauty. Bro, some of these people, just, they don't even, like, it don't even be making sense. Bro. But because it makes sense to them. Bro. They will put one crazy amount of money and then they will find another crazy person that sees the beauty in what they did and they will buy it. Bro, someone will buy you crazy. Mm. Someone will buy it. Like, yeah. someone was in their house and they're like, yeah, let me just paint this thing. Like, I love going into art galleries. Because mm. it's like the expression of people's madness. Yeah, <laughs> literally. And they're just like... <laughs> literally. And you're looking at it hundreds of years later and you're like, damn. Yeah. They cooked. And the thing with value but is it increases... Still. Like, the thing with value and beauty is it increases over time. Yeah. It does. Like, Mona Lisa's still going up in value. That babe. Bro. Still going to this day. Like, this babe, the babe is dead, but... She's alive. Yo. <laughs> Bro, value lives on... Ah, uh, let me not start again. Yeah. No, Mandy, I'll actually start again. Like <laughs> Value no, lives on, bro. You know that's me. The, that's the last word. You know me. I'll go. I'll keep <laughs> that's going. That's the last word. Value lives on. Bro. So seek after value, bro. In my phone now, I'm pulling up albums from the 70s, the 80s, the mm. 90s, the 10s. Those are the ones that have retained their value because mm-hmm. they were good then. They're still good Yo. now. <laughs> Who's still listening to Takashi 6 9 that's... What? You don't know Takashi Six Nine? Who, do you know Blueface? Ah. <laughs> do you know Blueface? I only know you are Alpha and <laughs> Omega. Do you know what? I'm not, guys. I'm you not know gonna, who you're talking to. Come I'm on. not gonna have these conversations with Mandy again. <laughs> I only know William McDowell. <laughs> Tasha Cops. It's time to end the episode, my Mary, God. Mary. <laughs> my God. Um, Jonathan, my girls. Um, you guys that grew up in Christian households, you guys are so funny, man. Oh, my God. Basically, I know a bit of my conduction. That was my rebellion. <laughs> Basically, it's just oh. it's just garbage rappers whose music didn't live on. Fair. Bro, well, they, sure, what do you want me to know there? So, like... Exa- do you know what I mean? <laughs> But yeah, okay. Let's end the episode. Yes, I know good rapper Tupac. That's how they say it in Congo, Abby. Tupac. <laughs> oh, I know the oh. good ones. Biggie. Oh. Hey, that's what I was looking for. That's another thing I was looking for. Oh, God. I know the good ones. Hey, oh. hey, hey, hey. What's the other one? Ooh, what's that old one? Ooh. A Snoop Dogg. Tifa. Come in. Snoop Dogg. Bro, do you know what? It sounds like me asking my mom about rap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. This is the end. No. This Big, is this. <laughs> Big Daddy Cool. <laughs> yo. Yo. Yo, yo, yo. I'm still trying to think of more rappers. I'm joking. <laughs> nah, I forgive you. It's okay. Oh, my God. All right. Let's wrap up the episode. <laughs> Oh Yo, my I God. think this is genuinely one of my favorite episodes so far. Oh my this was Lord. real fun. Oh Thank my. you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank I feel you like for you just in. you just sat in on one of our like big phone calls. Like, <laughs> well, no, yeah. this was cool. But yeah, the general message is create beauty. Yeah. Create beauty. Mm-hmm. Create value. Mm. When you create, don't just think of what it can bring you, money wise, fame wise, view wise. Think of how you can actually touch someone's heart. Think of how someone will be before they engage with your content and after. Mm -hmm. Like, what can it do to them? Do you know what I mean? Can it bring joy? Can it make them think? Can it bring sorrow? Can it bring laughter? Like, can it, like, can it inspire? Can it motivate? Can it strengthen? Mm -hmm. Or can it even make their life worse? Like, damn, like, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, (laughs) You said impact, but yo, 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 chill out, chill out, chill out. (laughs) I'm joking, I'm joking. But like, seek to make, when you create art, seek out beauty. Mm -hmm. Create something beautiful. Was this beautiful? This was beautiful. This was beautiful. Wow. What a time to be alive. Chef's kiss. (laughs) 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 But yeah, do you want to say anything before we jump off? Nah, thank you for tuning in. Peace out. I hope Uh, it was um, some, I hope. We brought you some value. Some value. Amen. And we call it a night. Call it a night, man. Yeah. All right, come. See you. Peace out. Bye, guys. I don't even know how to end it. I'm just tired, man. <laughs> Goodbye. I beg. Get out of my living room, man. <laughs> oh, why am I getting chased? I 
said it, I do. <laughs>